Hey. Namaskar. Uh, the thing about TED is 18 minutes. So that makes me nervous. It reminds me of uh, school days, ki teen ghante hai, bas paper khatam kar. <laughs> now, I would like to take nine hours to write that, or maybe one hour. And uh, yeah, extremely exciting. Uh, I've not come here to talk. I've come here to learn. I, uh, such an amazing institution was really looking forward. And when I got the opportunity, uh, I straight away jumped into it. And uh, thank you very much for having me over. And uh, 17 minutes to go. I still have to talk. Uh, so this is how we'll finish our 18 minutes. Uh, so un unlock, unleash, I, I should stay true to uh, the mood in the room, in the campus. Uh, so it's, it's, we, we hear the term unbox quite often. Uh, yeah, un unlock, unleash kind of follows the term after that. So I was wondering, uh, what is Unbox and how, uh, why Unbox? Uh, uh, why not stay in the box? What is the box? Uh, and why is it so important to Unbox? What the hell is the box? <laughs> I, ha I had no clue and I kept thinking, um, so finally, um, um, I was preoccupied and till six in the morning. So on the flight, uh, it came to me that I am the box, and, and um, to unbox uh, maybe does not mean looking outside. It most probably means looking inside and finding what is within you. It does not maybe mean thinking new, thinking different. It means thinking more original because each one of us is a unique creature. Now this is very important when I say that and I would like to repeat that, that each one of us is a unique creature. We cannot go through the same syllabus. It doesn't mean studies and all, otherwise there will be huge chaos. But the syllabus of life as laid out for us is extremely different. So 1.2 billion people, 1.2 billion dreams, 1.2 billion boxes, 1.2 billion ways to unlock them and unleash that as such. So, let me share my experience, what I mean by I am the box. Um, when I started making movies and telling stories, um, after I made my first film called Ux, I realized Ux, Ux happened quite by accident. I wasn't planning to make movies in life. And uh, it was, uh, um, I, I hope such accidents keep happening and I, I, I get to do something more in life, something other than movies uh, as such also. But uh, while shooting Ux, while writing it, while directing it, uh, I was very, lucky to work with a fabulous casting of Amitabh Bachchan, Manoj Bajpai, Ravina and Nandita. It kind of was a mixed school of discipline and acting and uh, what they brought in into the business as such. So I got a lot out of that and uh, the movie got over and I realized that technique comes uh, naturally to me. I don't have to think technique, it just happens. Uh, interacting with actors, uh, 
I really enjoyed it. I love people, and actors are people. So I love them. They love me back. And uh, so fantastic. I think I was in the right place. Uh, telling stories is what something I discovered. I, very early I realized this is my job profile or job description is nothing else but that of a storyteller. Uh, there have been storytellers down the ages for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, they used to be merchants, they used to be travelers. They would pack their stuff on their donkeys and mules and just walk and reach a village, sit around a fire and tell stories about their land. I'm just a traveler with my mule and my donkey and I go to a village. In today's day and age of technology, reach, outreach, I can make a movie and I don't have to travel to many villages they get broadcasted as such. But the job is essentially the same. So, what stories do I tell? Do I tell uh, an American idea made in India? Uh, do I tell uh, something which makes uh, a commercial sense on an Excel sheet given by producers and financiers. Isko lelo, isko lelo. Ye chal raha hai, ek love story banate hain. And sahi ho jayega. So, I had to look within. So, I was the box. As such. So, I went deep down inside. I had gone to, I studied in an Air Force school, Bal Bharti Air Force, New Delhi. Lodi Road. Uh, every time we entered the school, there was a MiG-21 plane there. Uska uh, And uh, it, it, it's still there. And we used to play around it. We used to get punished underneath the MiG-21. During the sun, we used to sit under the shadow. It became a part of me, a part of my psyche. It became a part of the way we thought. We used to go to air shows. Uh, all my teachers, most of them, were wives of Air Force officers who were fighting for the country, out there protecting the country. Uh, my, a lot of my friends were children from the defenses. A lot of them later on went on to join Air Force and fly planes. So park this on one side. This is my school. Uh, then I go to Delhi University, uh, Sri Ram College of Commerce. And uh, very volatile days as far, as far as the politics of this country was concerned. 1977 emergency had just happened. So we had gone through the darkest age phase of politics. Uh, uh, the army had moved into Golden Temple. This is around that four or five years, what was going on. And Delhi University was a battlefield of politics, of beliefs, of ideologies, very strong ideologies, very strong beliefs as such. But we were even better, all of us were very good at one thing, which was pointing fingers. Kiya, they don't give us electricity. Matlab, bara gante batti nia thi. The road mein potholes hain. Those ministers are corrupt. Sab ko line mein khada karke goli se uda dena chai. Uh, they don't do this. Look at America. Look at Europe. They, 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 they was they. It was crazy. And including me, we were always saying they. Uh, and you know, we really wanted to change the world. All young people, it's they don't. It's it's an obligation of the youth. It's not. It, it, it's a duty, because once this time passes, you really don't want to change the world. Uh, and this is the time, and you, the youth, is what changes the world. But time passed. We took our first jobs. We took a, 
uh, bought our first motorcycle, rented our first flats, and we um, kind of settled into life. That's my college part. Uh, then I went to, came to Bombay to make advertising films, which kind of blossomed into feature films later on. But in between, I was called by uh, my friend's younger brother, who was still in college. And he said, Bhaiya, aao jara kuch ho hai. And there, there was the Mandal Commission protest going on. And we spent an evening in All India Medical Institute singing songs against the establishment. And uh, it was a reservation in, in education, which the young was protesting against. So when I started, now I go back to my childhood in Old Delhi. Uh, 15th August was highly celebrated. My house overlooked the Red Fort. We used to fly kites. And there used to be the Prime Minister's uh, speech, which used to resonate all over. And uh, I still remember always Doordarshan used to play Shaheed, the movie, uh, which was Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, Sukhdev. And there was always this shows and patriotism and Shero Shairi and all this. Uh, poets talking about, you know, revolution. So that was my childhood. I borrowed all that. So when the MiGs started crashing, and they were known as uh, coffins, uh, uh, you know, uh, flying coffins, coffins in tricolor, uh, NDTV documentary, a 2000 crore ghatala, corruption scandal. It made, I got angry. And I borrowed from there, I borrowed from the student protest of Tinaman Square and Mandal Commission and got the youth to rebel against the system in the movie. I borrowed from my growing up years and my knowledge and my fascination with the armed revolution of India during the British Raj from 1919 to 1932. <coughs> Why did students keep a pen and pick up a gun. Why did Bhagat Singh do that? They were all students in DAV college. And in fact, he was the editor for Pratap. And uh, why would he put a pen down? Why would Bismil, who was a poet, Ashwakullah Khan, who was a poet, they're writing poetry. They're supposed to have long hair. They're not supposed to pick up guns. You know, they're like cool guys. They're romantic. They picked up guns and knowing that they're walking to their death. Why would Bhagat Singh go and blow a bomb in the parliament, which was a smoke bomb, it didn't hurt anybody. Because deaf wanted, he wanted the deaf to hear. And he plotted his march to the gallows. He said, I get a better opportunity while I'm in the jail to spread my voice. And he was right. So all that became Rangde Basanti as such. So, for me to unbox was actually to look within. All my stories, Delhi 6, is about religious intolerance, which is my growing up years in Old Delhi, 11006, uh, Delhi 6. Bhag Milka Bhag, my fascination uh, with sports, all of us are fascinated. But for us, the hero is Milka Singh, Dara Singh, and Dhyan Chand, when I was growing up. I used to swim a lot, so I've grown up with stories. I stayed in Lajpat Nagar, which was essentially a refugee colony of partition. People had suffered partition, especially the women and the children, millions. So, so had Milka Singh. So the story was about that, a 12-year-old kid who doesn't have a roof, who doesn't have shoes to wear, food to eat, no parents, has witnessed the massacre of his parents. How does he go out? Go out? and break the world record, the Olympic record, the Asian Games record. His record stands for 60 years in India in athletics. And, but nobody wanted to see uh, a Sadarji as a hero, which is not a romantic film. Where is the DKNY? Where is the London songs? Where is Switzerland? Nobody would finance that film. Nobody would finance Rangde Basanti. 
Delhi 6 got financed because Rangdev was such a huge hit. Uh, but after that, again, nobody would finance Park Milka Park. So, uh, what do you unlock? You just unlock your thoughts because un you're, until you're thinking about things, it's not going to matter. It's not going to happen. And what you unleash them into action. Because at the end of the day, the sum total of your life is what you do, is not what you think. Your character will be defined by your action. Character is never defined by humne kya bhashan de diya. Yaha ke mene kya bol diya. Aap sab ke aage. Aur kuch achhi achhi baatein bol diya. Aur kuch taliyan pad gai. Usse kuch farak nahi padda. What you think, what you discuss in the class, what you debate, what you talk about the system of the world and whether it's gender equality, whether it's poverty, whether it's whatever you were talking about, whether it's uh, artificial intelligence or, or AI or VR, it doesn't matter unless you're doing it. Yes, it's good to have the knowledge, but um, I think unleashing means you're unleashing yourself, not your potential, all those are words. So if you put all this together, I think it's an amazing chapter you have opened in this institution. It's a very, very poignant one. It's very serious. So it's, it's something which we will take for the rest of our lives. I, I wish I had a seminar like this when I was in school. But uh, we had better times. We were always in the playground. So <laughs> always, yeah, morning to evening. And... Um, in fact, when my son asked me, so how was school? I said, we were only playing. And I, I, when I look at his timetable, I said, where are your PE classes? We have this once a week here. So, yeah. So, so unleash yourself. Unlock yourself. It's not about anything else. It's not about what is that idea, big idea. When you look inside, it will organically happen. It will just roll out. Don't worry about that. Just do it. Thank you very much.